Hello, I'm Jim Amon. I have uh, recently published a book through the Sourlands Conservancy called Seeing the Sourlands. It's a collection of 64 essays and well over 100 photographs that I've taken, all of them dealing with plants and animals and natural processes that occur in the Sourland uh, region. The, um, the book uh, was published in December and it uh, seems to have hit a chord. There are a lot of people who are uh, interested in the Sourlands and, and want to know a little more about it. And that in fact is exactly why I wrote the book. I, I wrote the book because I have for many years led nature walks in the Sourland region and found that people are interested but they don't know very much about it and they'd like to know some more. I'm an amateur uh, or a, a sort of a wannabe botanist myself uh, because I did not study it in college, but I have had a career which has um, been always, almost, almost always about the outdoors. Uh, for 30 years, I was the director of the DNR Canal Commission, and for 10 years, I was the director of stewardship for the DNR Greenway Land Trust. Uh, after that, I was very briefly a member of the Board of Trustees for the Sourlands Conservancy, and that caused me to have a great affection for that organization. And I was very happy that even when I left the board, they allowed me to publish once a month my Seeing the Sourlands essays and photographs. Uh, what I'm going to do is read one of the essays uh, for you today, and I hope that you enjoy it and learn a little something and get motivated to go out and see the Sourlands. 25 years ago, I bought a book in a used bookstore entitled Forest Soils. I bought it because this was a subject that I knew little about. Once I got it home, I discovered that it was a textbook published in 1946, and it was dull and didactic. The book went up on my bookshelf, a monument to my good intentions. It stayed there all these years until I took it down again when I started to prepare this essay. I still found it to be insufferably dull, but before I could put it aside again, I read a statement about soils that the author quoted from an 1891 book. The statement is elegant in both style and concept, and it awakened me to the pleasure that I could get from continuing to research this, sub, this topic. Here's the statement then. Forest soils, which at first sight seem a mere rude mingling of unrelated materials, is in truth a well-organized part of nature, which has beautifully varied and adjusted its function with the forces that operate upon it. Although it is the realm of mediation between the inorganic and the organic kingdom, it is by the variety of its functions more nearly akin to the vital than to the lifeless part of the earth. It is reasonable to compare its operations to those of the plants which it sustains, for in both there are the harmonious functions which lead matter from its primitive condition to the higher estate of organic existence. Think of that. Soil is not just the hard stuff we walk on or the surface of trees somehow grow from. It is more akin to the plants growing in it than it is to a stone. It is almost alive. Well, it's not alive, but it is highly complex and contains an amazing amount of material that is alive. Recently, a soil scientist in upstate New York removed a one inch thick section of forest soil that was one square foot in area and found one th 1,356 living creatures, 7 billion bacteria, and many millions of fungi, algae, and protozoa. It may seem like there could be no room in soil for anything else, but even adding other organic material like decomposed leaves, seeds, nuts, bark twigs, and limbs, the org organic content of forest soil only comprises about 5% of the total. The largest component of forest soil is the minerals, sand, silt, and clay. Water is usually the second biggest component, but the amount of water depends on many factors. How much and how recently has it rained? 
lowlands have more water than uplands or slopes. Water drains right through sandy soil. It cannot easily penetrate clay soil and it bonds with humus. Soils also contain gases. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen are present and are essential for plants to grow. The upper layers of forest soil contain a network of mycorrhizal fungus, a fungus that has, is so interesting that it is truly miraculous. This fungal network surrounds the roots of trees and shrubs and grows into them. From the roots, it draws sugars that are made from the photosynthesis, which takes place in the, in the tree's canopy. In exchange for the sugar, it facilitates the passage of water, gases, and nutrients from the surrounding soil into the roots, which then transmit them to the rest of the plant. Forest soil is also akin to the plants it supports because, like them, it is changing continuously. It is eroded by wind and water. New material is added to it from the organic matter that falls to the forest floor and is broken down by various agents of decomposition. Stones slowly weather and add new minerals to the soil. As water seeps through the soil, it leaches the upper levels of minerals and other nutrients. Roots take nutrients from the soil. Even a lightning strike can have an effect. Lightning separates nitrogen atoms in the air, and then the nitrogen falls to the earth, enriching the soil. Forest soils are different from agricultural or residential soils because they have not been plowed, compacted by machinery or from consistent human activity. Nor have they had herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizing chemicals poured on them. Forest soil needs to be seen as a precious natural resource, just as we regard the forest itself. And, you know, I just can't get over the fact that I never would have thought that I would have found doing an essay on dirt as interesting as I found this. <laughs> <laughs>